this is your guide to the altar. Initiating sequence. The Ultra, also known as the Predators, Hunters, or Xenopredators, are an alien sentient race known for hunting other dangerous species for sport, honor, and the coming of age. The Ultra are natives of Yolcha Prime, a planet that has at least two major biomes. Climate, a dry, hot desert environment with rivers of flowing lava and a humid, wet jungle biome. Native life. Yolcha Prime hosts a plethora of wildlife, sapient life forms. Yolcha, super predators. Non sapient life forms. Predator horse, blood pig, hellhound, Kaipsas, Vaidrach, Quatsarij. Geographical features. Yolcha Prime orbits a trinary star system and possesses a gaseous ring. Terrain and climate. The climate is hot in temperatures and humid throughout most of the planet. Furthermore, there is intense volcanic activity present. The volcanic regions are also known to contain areas of lethal radioactivity, with the dangerous Vaidrach living in these areas. Physical Traits and Biology Predators are bipedal humanoids, physically distinguishable from humans by their greater height, the long hair-like appendages on their heads, their reptilian skin, and their faces, which feature anthropod-like mandibles and no visible nose. The biological purpose of the distinctive mandibles is unclear. It has been speculated that they may be used in reproduction or mating rituals. They also seem to be utilised by Yaucha to convey emotions. For example, splayed mandibles apparently signify anger or surprise. As well as the fleshy dreadlocks around the side of the head, some predators have also been seen to possess sparse, coarse facial hair on their cheeks and above their eyes. While generally uniform, each Yaucha's physical appearance includes a number of subtle variations akin to human genetic diversity. Similarly, while predator heights vary, they are typically over 7 feet tall, although some have been known to grow to 8 feet or even taller. Despite this, shorter individuals have been recorded, such as Mandy, or the aptly named Shorty, who stood around six and a half foot. These individuals are unusual, and their smaller height is often the subject of ridicule in Yolcha society. The species' reptile-like skin can range in colour from light to dark, be mottled or clear, and can appear dry or moist and clammy. Predator's vision operates mainly in the infrared portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. They can easily detect heat differentials in their surroundings, but are unable to easily distinguish among objects of the same relative temperature. A predator's biomask greatly enhances its ability to see in a variety of spectrums, ranging from the low infrared to the high ultraviolet, and also filters ambient heat from the air, allowing them to distinguish prey with greater clarity and detail. Predators breathe 1% more oxygen and 4% more nitrogen than humans, and are capable of adapting themselves to Earth's atmosphere for a maximum of a week if deprived of breathing apparatus. According to industrialist Isabella Borgia, Yaucha possess superior genetic material compared to humans that, if used correctly, could enhance humanity as a species. The augmentation of her son, Hunter Borgia, was one such project carried out in this regard, although the genetic experimentation was not completed before Hunter was slain by the Yaucha known as Scarface. Nevertheless, Yaucha genes are evidently potent enough that when one is impregnated with a xenomorph chestburster, the resulting creature adopts more obvious physical characteristics from its host than normal, such as dreadlocks and mandibles, leading to the distinctive predalien cast.
Their blood is luminescent phosphor green in colour and has the capacity to partially neutralise the acidity of xenomorph blood. It has also been known to possess significant life-prolonging properties for humans capable of extending a person's lifespan well beyond that would be normally possible. It is thought that the Yolcha are cold-blooded beings, hence their affinity for hot, humid conditions. Some predators referred to as Hish have been known to possess a gland located between between their neck and collarbone, which secretes powerful hormones into their bloodstream, driving them to hyperaggression. When this gland is overstimulated, it sends the creatures into a frenzied rage, causing them to attempt killing any living thing in sight, including members of their own species. This kill rage can be contagious, spreading from one individual to the next, driving them all to attack each other. These predators barely survive the wars provoked by their kill glands, and they have learned to control the gland secretions with artificial hormone regulators. There is significant sexual dimorphism amongst the Yaucha, with females being larger and stronger than males while sporting more prominent mammary glands. While this is true of some, and even perhaps most predators, other predator females have been witnessed who superficially show little distinction from males. There may be variance between clans and predator subspecies, as the clans do not often interact with each other. Some clans might have females that are larger and stronger than the males, and in other clans the opposite may be true. Both genders give off a strong musk to signify aggression. This musk can be detected by other predators and canids, though it is imperceptible to humans. Reproduction. How Yaucha procreate is never explained in detail, however their anatomy implies a process not too different from most earth mammals. Young Yaucha are called pups, suckers, or occasionally sucklings. Unlike humans, Yaucha have a breeding season in which the females select the strongest and bravest males to sire their young. Females do not generally select young bloods or the unblooded. It is only when a male reaches blooded status and has worthy kills to his name that a female desires him as a mate. Continuing the bloodline is another imperative of the species. The amount of pups born per pregnancy is never revealed. However, it isn't uncommon for particularly esteemed hunters to have 70 or 80 offspring. Yolcha are polygamous breeders and have never been known to stay with a single mate. Diet Though their dietary habits are not clearly established, the city hunter was known to visit a slaughterhouse in the city of Los Angeles every two days to feed on the meat stored there, which suggests a carnivorous or perhaps omnivorous diet. Lifespan Whilst the maximum or typical lifespan of a predator is yet unknown, it is accepted as being well in excess of human lifespans. Predator elders have been known to live for hundreds to thousands of years. It has been suggested that one or two centuries is considered young for the species, with relative adolescents not attending their initiation xenomorph hunt before they attain an age of a few centuries. Most, however, do not reach senescence due to the risks of their dangerous semi-nomadic lifestyle. Physical Abilities Yolcha are highly resilient to physical damage, capable of recovering from multiple gunshot wounds with little to no medical attention, surviving radiation doses which would be fatal to humans and are highly resilient to most bacteria or viruses. They are incredibly strong, easily capable of outmatching a well-conditioned adult male human in unarmed combat, and able to hit with enough force to shatter solid concrete. Predators are capable of tearing a human's head and spine from the body with little effort, while some larger specimens have been known to tear a human body in half using only their bare hands. This strength evidently extends to their lower bodies as well, as predators have been seen to jump up to three times their own height, and are capable of falling up to ten times their height, but land safely on their feet. They are skilled climbers, and in fact appear to prefer moving at height through trees or across rooftops in pursuit of their prey. Typically, they jump from one vantage point to the next, giving them high ground advantage at all times. Despite being capable of surviving exposure in Antarctic temperatures for an extended period of time, it seems as though predators have a preference for hot equatorial climates. Speech, language and communication 
Predators possess their own language, both in spoken and written form, the latter of which resembles a series of clicks, snarls, roars and growls. The written language is expressed in a pattern of dashes, not dissimilar in form and function to many Earth-based languages. These written symbols appear on the Yautja's gauntlet displays, helmets and architecture, amongst other surfaces. Predators regularly mimic human speech which they overhear. It is unclear to what degree the Yautja can comprehend this speech, although the creatures at least seem to have some understanding of the language. Individuals have been known to repeat phrases at vaguely appropriate times as a form of communication with prey. Older predators with more experience among humans have on occasion been known to actually learn to speak a human language to a limited extent. More often, however, it has been known for humans and Yautja to successfully communicate using sign language. There is evidence that Yautja understand the concept of humour. For example, during events on Bouvet Island, the predator scar deliberately caused a deceased xenomorph to shoot out its inner jaw and startle legs. Her shock caused Scar's mandibles to click, suggesting his amusement and laughter at the incident. According to Michiko Nagochi, laughter is universal, even in their species, and the predator equivalent of a belly laugh is the rapid clicking of its tusks. Culture and History Yaucha culture centers on the ritualistic hunting of other dangerous life forms, and this practice appears to be the foundation of their very society. Predators will travel huge distances, even across entire galaxies, in order to face opponents they consider worthy prey. Also, they will kidnap and transport prey across similar distances to bring such victims to a hunting ground of their choice. As a part of initiation rituals, the predators have been known to deliberately breed xenomorphs in order for young predators to hunt them. Predators usually operate alone, exceptions being when young predators undertake their first hunt as a means of initiation. Although even then, each member of the group is expected to hunt by himself. When hunting, predators notably follow a strict code of honour that dictates the manner in which they kill their prey. Defeating a hunt is apparently a cause of great shame to the Yautja and often leads to the individual committing honourable suicide, typically through the detonation of their wrist gauntlet's self-destruct device. Upon their death, a hunting Yautja spacecraft will return to the species homeworld on automatic pilot so that the images of the individual's hunt recorded through their biomask may be returned to its kin and even studied if necessary. Hunting culture. Yautja culture revolves around the hunt. They do not necessarily hunt to eliminate threats or for food, but for honour, sport and the thrill of the hunt. To Yautja, no hunt meant no will to live. Yautja will take a trophy from their prey, which can include a wide range of items. Most commonly, a piece or part of the victim's body like the skull but items, or trinkets of personal significance to the original prey, may also be claimed. The victim's skull, sometimes with a spinal cord still attached, will be meticulously cleaned, the flesh and muscles stripped from it, and the brains removed. These trophies are collected by a Yautja as a means to display their skill, and are often displayed in a trophy room, or even on an individual Yautja's costume. In some cases, the victim's body itself becomes the trophy. The body is flayed of all skin, disemboweled and hung by the feet from a great height. This process can be performed either after death or whilst the prey is still alive. Skinned victims are usually those who were considered easy prey by the predator. In such cases, the corpse is not recovered and is left out as a warning or taunt to other prey who may discover it, as well as an indication of the Yautja's worth and experience to other predators. Predators will often mark themselves with a blooded symbol using the deceased xenomorph's blood. However, the blooded symbol varies with each clan. 
combat between Yalja is generally not permitted, as the focus of their species is to kill and hunt other life forms. Certain predator clans have been known to take unorthodox approaches, such as accepting humans into their clans. Inter-clan rivalries and internal mutinies have also been known to happen, and the predator culture has not always been witnessed as being totally uniform. Rarely, some predators have been known to kill or attempt to kill unarmed men, women and children, often in dishonourable ways, such as ambushes or shooting their quarry in the back. Note, however, these may be renegade clans or, more likely, killers or bad bloods. It has been suggested that the engineers and Yaoja may have been adversaries. Furthermore, the xenomorphs may have been an engineer weapon against the Yaoja. Religion the predators are polytheistic, and their equivalent of the Grim Reaper is also called Black Warrior, who is seen as an eternal adversary who eventually wins all battles. They worship a warrior god named Pyre, who is godlike in their hunting and fighting abilities. They are also called the Conquering Warrior. Society Yaucha society operates a class or ranking system nominally based on an individual's hunting experience and prowess. Their titles include Youngblood or Unblooded. About 25% of male Yaucha are Youngbloods. This means that the individual has made no distinguishable kills. Once a Yaucha kills their first worthy target, usually a Xenomorph, and collects its head as a trophy, they become blooded. Youngbloods are typically adolescent or teenage Yaucha sent on their rite of passage in threes to kill a Xenomorph. Blooded. Approximately 45% of male Yaucha are blooded. These are warriors who have successfully hunted suitable prey and have thereby passed into adulthood. In some clans, it is traditional for the individual to mark themselves in some way following the first successful hunt, such as burning a symbol onto the forehead with the blood of a slain xenomorph. Blooded Yaucha are granted access to more advanced weaponry denied to young bloods, including the plasma caster. Retirees. About 10% of male Yaucha are retirees, predators who no longer fight and are now too old and honoured to hunt. Females commonly come under this section due to their roles as mothers and the driving force behind the home world's natural wasteland systems. Elite. Elite predators are often leaders in their clan, and are only elevated to the cast of elite predator once they have acquired the skull of a xenomorph queen. About 15% of blooded Yaucha are elite predators. Elites specialise in a particular weapon, making that weapon their strong suit. For example, a brawler is an expert with wrist blades, while a spear master uses the combi stick. Elite predators often become retirees after a few decades. Clan Leader Clan leaders are only made by the adjudicator's decision. The only way to become a clan leader is to clean out an entire xenomorph hive larger than 300 members with a maximum of two other predators. When this has been proven, the surviving Yalcha all become clan leaders. They will become forefathers of that clan and will repopulate with females of their choosing. In order to be eligible for the trials of a hive cleansing, each member of the trio must have at least three Queen Skull trophies. After this point, any hive cleansings that the forefathers complete will give the clan greater honour and standing in the caste system. Clan leaders comprise 5% of the Yalcha society. Adjudicators The adjudicators are the administrators and law enforcers of the predators. They are world leaders and the ruling class in Yalcha society. Less than 1% of Yalcha are adjudicators due to their massive worldly role. At this point, they no longer have time to hunt off planets, but often foray into underground hunting grounds where younger hunters train in order to lend experience to the young ones. Adjudicators are always the leaders of a clan, and no adjudicators have ever risen to that position without first having completed at least five hive cleansings. Bad Bloods These are criminal Yalcha who have been sentenced to death and escaped. The predator justice system shows that crime is very low. About 2% of Yaucha are bad bloods. In Predator Concrete Jungle, the term bad bloods was also applied to predators captured by humans and brainwashed. Apprentice. These are honourable humans taken by predators to learn their ways. 
ancient veterans of many hunts. These predators are nearly a thousand years old and are also leaders and retirees. Few predators live long enough to become ancients and those that do are highly respected. Clothing and armament. Predator clothing and armour can be as varied as the physical appearance of Yolcha individuals and seems to be based on personal preference. Design changes can include tribal ornamentation on the forehead, different arrangements of armour plates and different colours or metals used for the individual's armour pieces. Perhaps the most recognisable aspect of a predator's armour is its bio-mask, the outward design of which can range from simple and utilitarian to elaborate and decorative. Another common item is a heated wire mesh undersuit with temperature control elements to help the predator adapt to the harshest of cold environments. Other elements, such as the metallic armour plates and bandoliers for weapons including grenades, are applied over the top of this mesh. Wrist gauntlets house a number of weapons, including retractable wrist blades and self-destruct explosives, as well as a computerised control for many of the predator's systems. Technology. Yolcha technology is distinctive in many respects, with an eclectic mix of sophisticated weaponry decorated with an ornate tribal theme. However, despite the species' obvious technological advancements, such as cloaking devices and plasma weaponry, traditional ancient weapons, such as blades, knives and spears, are still employed widely and are actually considered more honourable when used in the hunt than advanced technology. Some Yolcha weaponry are forged from metals that do not correspond to any known element on the periodic table, and many devices have been shown to be completely resistant to the effects of the acidic blood of the xenomorphs. Despite this, the wrist blades and chest armour of immature young blood predators are still made of metals that are not resistant to xenomorph blood. It seems such advanced armour must be earned through initiation rituals that first test the individual's prowess with more rudimentary equipment. Many of the oldest tools make use of thermal imaging to track prey, while some aspects of their technology has been in use for millennia. Individuals of the species will often utilise their own bespoke variations of established Yolcha weapons constructed from different materials and with varying degrees of tribal or symbolic ornamentation. Some of the most widely utilised predator equipment includes Cloak Light bending adaptive camouflage allowing predators a form of invisibility or at least translucence, rendering them extremely difficult to see. The invisibility effect has been known to be shorted out through contact with water or if the arm gauntlet is damaged and is susceptible to the effects of an electromagnetic pulse. The device has also been known to fail as a result of direct assaults on the predator's body, be it with ranged weaponry or physical attacks. This device is rendered useless during xenomorph hunts owing to the xenomorph's ability to see through its cloaking effects. Bio mask. The predator's mask contains technology that enhances thermal vision and provide additional vision modes in other electromagnetic spectra ranging from night vision to ultraviolet and even vibration scanning. It also allows for vocal mimicry, has a language translator and records anything the predator sees and hears so that it may be subsequently reviewed. Wrist gauntlet. This will often contain the SATCOM, an energy flechette or power punch glove. It also incorporates touchpad technology to control a predator's cloak, self-destruct device, and even remotely pilots predator vessels. Medicomp. Predator hunters carry field medical equipment, including solvents capable of cauterizing and healing wounds, and various serums and other medical devices. Weapons. The predators stalk and kill their prey using a combination of highly advanced technology including energy weapons and camouflage combined with more ancient traditional weapons like spears, blades and nets. Wrist blades. Razor sharp serrated blades worn on a wrist gauntlet typically in pairs used for close combat and the ritualistic mutilation of prey. Scimitar. Essentially an enlarged singular wrist blade worn on the forearm. Plasma Caster, a shoulder-mounted range weapon capable of direct bolts of high-energy plasma at distant targets. The Plasma Caster is generally aimed with the Predator's bio-mask, although there are exceptions. Plasma Pistol, a handheld version of the Plasma Caster.
spear gun, a projectile weapon that fires small metal spears, comparable to a traditional projectile firearm or crossbow. Combi stick, a retractable spear that can be used either in hand-to-hand -hand combat or as a throwing weapon. Glaive, similar to the combi stick, this combat staff is fitted with a sizeable blade at each end, designed to slice through prey. Maul, a heavy bladed weapon with a perpendicular handle and arrangement similar to a police officer's nightstick. Net gun, a handheld device capable of firing a wire net with enough force to pin a target to the wall. The net also features an automatic tightening mechanism designed to cause grievous wounds to the enclosed target. Smart Disc, a throwing, self-guided, discus-like cutting device. Shuriken, similar to the Smart Disc, except considerably larger and fitted with several long fan-like blades around its circumference. Whip, a segmented bullwhip, capable of slicing targets in half with enough force. Mines, predators utilise a variety of mines with varying trigger mechanisms and detonation effects in their hunts. Transportation. The Mothership, an enormous mobile base for Yolcha hunters. Motherships are an entirely autonomous craft where multiple scout ships can dock. The ships seldom enter conflict with another force and are usually inhabited by a single clan led by the clan elder. These ships utilise cloaking technologies that render them sensor invisible, making them virtually impossible to detect. Pilots of other predator vessels, however, can use their vessel's standard beacons to locate a nearby mothership. Warriors can battle for respect and acquire new weapons and devices upon motherships. These vessels also house a trophy case in which its clan's trophies are put on display. Almost every mothership holds a captive xenomorph queen, which the Ultra warriors most likely release in an area for a hunt. Motherships are fully equipped with scout ships and insurgent pods, capable of launching a hunter onto a planet's surface and sending smaller scout ships onto hunts. Furthermore, they are equipped with sophisticated beam weapons, powerful enough to punch a hole from the orbit of a planet down to the deep crust. They also have two versions of self-destruct devices, one that detonates in a massive thermonuclear explosion and another that implodes the ship, removing all traces of its existence. Weapons. It is known that predators have some form of offensive weaponry on their ships, including rocket-like projectiles and powerful plasma beams. Motherships can also deploy drop pods containing individual predators to the surface of a planet, and also contain small escape ships. Once a Yolcha is inside the escape ship, it detaches from the mothership and uses its two thrusters to propel itself through space. Similarly to the insertion pods, the escape ships only have room for one Yolcha. Holograms. Motherships have holographic technology that project real-time images from within a location as well as 3D mapping. Trophy rooms. Most motherships contain trophy rooms that display skulls and or skeletons of the prey that the clan has hunted down over the centuries and captured, such as dinosaurs, xenomorphs, humans and other creatures. The scout ship is a short-range Yolcha spacecraft which is usually connected to the mothership and are used to drop off Yolcha hunters in close proximity of a planet. Scout ships have three external thrusters and a large blade on the belly of the vessel. Similar to motherships, these also contain a trophy room and have holographic technology. Scout ships also contain a storage room for captive facehuggers, a drop pod. A drop pod is a Yolcha vehicle used to insert individual predators to the surface of a planet, usually for the purpose of taking part in a hunt. Such pods allow Yaucha to reach the surface of a planet quickly, often undetected, without the need for a larger mothership to make a landing. Before impact, three fins are activated at the rear of the pod to slow its descent, and the device is also fitted with a thruster to control the speed and direction. The pods are capable of impacting the surface at high speed without causing any harm to the predator within. A hunt master ship orbits a planet during a clan-scale hunt and drops in reinforcements upon request around a shrine. The Game Preserve Ship was a Yolcha ship on the Game Preserve planet which both the Super Predator and Jungle Hunter clans could control via their risk gauntlets. The ship was ultimately destroyed when the Berserker Super Predator used his remote detonator to explode the ship when Royce attempted to pilot it to Earth. Relationship with Xenomorphs Of all their prey, 
The Yalcha apparently have a special hunting relationship with the Xenomorphs, which they refer to as serpents. They seem to consider the voracious alien life forms to be the ultimate prey and correspondingly have a reverence for the creatures. The Ultra have been known to specifically breed the creatures at numerous sites for use in the initiation hunts undertaken by young bloods. The Ultra will often capture and imprison xenomorph queens using their eggs to breed lesser castes to hunt. Some of these captured queens have apparently been imprisoned for tens of thousands of years. The Ultra have also been known to seed worlds with xenomorphs so that they can be hunted there, infecting the local fauna and then engaging the resulting creatures. Large statues of xenomorphs can often be found in and around Yolcha hunting temples and ruins. History with Earth Capable of interstellar travel, the predators have hunted on Earth for centuries and have also had contact with the engineers. Furthermore, the Ultra have a long and involved history with humans on Earth, dating back to ancient times. Evidence suggests the Ultra influenced the development of early human civilizations, including the ancient Egyptians, the Khmer Empire, the Aztecs and a largely undocumented culture inhabiting what is now modern-day Antarctica. During ancient times, the predators were worshipped as gods by the primitive peoples of Earth. They in turn taught these early humans how to construct pyramids, explaining why so many ancient civilizations share distinctively similar cultures and architecture. These pyramids and temples were then used as hunting grounds by the Yalcha, typically for initiation hunts involving the Xenomorphs, which would be bred through the use of sacrificial human hosts that the civilizations would provide. These rite of passage hunts were conducted every 100 years on Earth. Each young blood taking part would be expected to return with the head of a Xenomorph killed in hand-to-hand -hand combat. If the young hunters were successful in these trials, they would use the acid of their foes to sear a clan marking or other symbol into their biomasks and or foreheads. Alternatively, should they fail and the hunting grounds be overrun with xenomorphs, the Yalcha were expected to activate their self-destruct devices, dying honourably and eliminating all trace of the xenomorph infestation. Not all hunts on Earth were conducted in such a manner. Yalcha also visited the planet to hunt humans as well. In fact, the species has been linked with the destruction of the ancient Mayans in Central America. Yalcha individuals have also hunted humans during the Renaissance in North America prior to its colonization by the European nations, in New Way City in 1930, in Oajima during World War II, in Cambodia during the Vietnam War, in Beirut, in Valverde during the late 1980s, in Los Angeles in the mid-1990s, and Neonopolis in 1930, as well as on numerous other occasions. A predator also travelled to Earth in 2004 to clean up a xenomorph outbreak in Colorado, resulting from a failed hunt in Antarctica earlier in the year. Throughout history, predators have also abducted humans from Earth for staged hunts on at least one game-preserved planet that they control in an undefined region of space. This particular means of hunting prey seems to be utilised primarily by the super predators. Views on non-predator races Predators will often be supremacists towards other species. For example, they see humans as cowardly yet cunning. However, even brave individuals like Machiko Nogochi was discriminated against despite being a blooded hunter who slayed a queen. In contrast, all wise Yaucha consider certain humans to be dangerous game. Humans are less known for their strength, and more for their craftiness, which can bring down even the fiercest hunter. Yaucha seldom interact with other intelligent species outside of hunting purposes, and even then, there are strict rules on how to conduct the interaction. Some predators have shown willingness to work with humans without much hesitance. For instance, Scar was one such hunter who decided to escape the underground pyramid together with Lex Woods. This was your guide to the Yalcha. This file terminates here. End sequence.